Now, if you're considering an EV or a plug-in hybrid, one topic that will come up is charging at home. Hopefully you do this before you buy the car. Yes, you can charge using a three pin socket, but some practices may not be the best and can be quite dangerous. So in this video, we're covering 10 things that you guys need to know about our EV home charger install, and of course, what happens on the day as well. Now, having a home charger installed is of course, one of the best things you can do. Not only is it faster than charging using a three pin plug, it's also safer as well, and can add a ton of smart functionality, which you will probably want to do, as no doubt with a fuel car, you'll probably be shopping around trying to find the cheapest fuel source. This is where home charging and off-peak tariffs come in, but I'll cover more on that on another video in the future. So what are the 10 things that you guys need to know when it comes to getting a home charger? Well, recently I actually reached out to Omi, who have actually been pairing up with a lot of car manufacturers recently based on their smart functionality, which I can't wait to test out. And they very kindly offered to install one in my house so that when I bring an EV home for testing a course on YouTube and doing a review, I'll be able to actually make sure it's fully charged. It would just make my life a little bit easier. And of course, potentially when I get an EV in the future as well. Now, Omi actually make this really, really simple. And actually, after you filled out a few details, you appear on their web portal. But this is the first one, and this is kind of the most important and obvious one. Where would you like your charger? And you might be thinking, well, I'll just put it here. Well, actually, have a think about the car that you're buying or the plug-in hybrid or the EV, and think about where the port is. They're not all the same. Some cars can have it on the left, some on the right, some at the front, even some at the very back. And of course, think about as well if you're going to drive in or if you're gonna reverse in, because that will also affect where you might want your charger to be. Now, next up is to choose whether you want a tethered or untethered option. And quite simply, this just means whether a charge point has the cable on it or you use the cable that comes with the car. Now, most EV purchases and plug-in hybrid purchases should have the Type 2 cable that comes with it, although some other manufacturers may be slightly different, so of course just do your research and check you're getting the right one. But yes, tethered quite simply means there's a cable already attached to it, which will obviously hang on the outside of your house. Untethered means you use the cable that comes with the car, so it just kind of depends aesthetically what you might prefer. And then also if you want to get the cable out the boot, which could be buried underneath everything, depends where you put it. For me, I've gone for the tethered option. Now, next on the list actually refers to the installation of your house, your house electrics, essentially. So the first thing I want to know is where the main cutout fuse is. So you have your electricity coming into the house using this wire here, and then there'll be a main cutout fuse. So what I actually had to do was take a photo of my main cutout fuse, which is actually located in your electricity meter just on the outside. So you just need to find that key, which you can never find when, <laughs> when you need to access it. But yeah, just grab a photo and then you upload it onto the portal. Now after this, this one threw me slightly because there was a question that says, does your incoming electricity supply have an isolation switch? Now I couldn't actually see one here. So then it says you may need to have an isolation switch fitted before your charge point can be installed. Well, if I need one, then we'll have to get one because we only moved in in March. So um, learn something every day. <laughs> so I'll ask the installers when they arrive later. After this, you'll need to find out where your consumer unit is. And consumer unit is basically like your kind of fuse board. So this is the main switch usually in the house where you can turn off uh, certain electrics. So it could be like the ring main or the oven or upstairs or downstairs or the lights, that sort of thing. You'll need to grab a photo of this like I did. And of course, this one's not looking the best, but hopefully we don't need to get a new one. But again, this is what the installers will need to check out. Um, taking these photos will allow them to obviously check to see if what we have is suitable. There was also another one as well. Now, of course, I'm not an electrician myself. I'm kind of learning this as we go. There's also another thing called an earth bonding, which is a green wire. But yes, had to grab a photo of that one, which of course was under the kitchen sink behind all the cleaning stuff. Now for the next one was a thing called MPAN, M-P-A-N, which I'd never heard of before. And it was this mysterious long number on the electricity bill. Don't worry, it does give you actually uh, kind of an idea of where to find it. But if you can find it ahead of time, it will just save a bit of uh, kind of fumbling around. But yeah, it's usually printed on your electricity bill. It's very important for an electric charger installation. And then after this is your energy use. Now, all of our properties are slightly different. Some people will have uh, extremely large houses, lucky you. <laughs> Some will have smaller houses, could be flats, apartments, bungalows, terrace houses, all sorts. So of course it depends how many people live in the house and the load and the amount of electrics you have. So of course, the more electric things you have, the more load you're gonna have. Remember that main cutout fuse? That was a hundred amps that um, 
that our house has. So um, hopefully that's suitable, but uh, that's what we had. So um, of course, this just kind of gives the installers an idea of your current load in the house. Now, just before the final two, I had to draw a sketch and um, I, I can't draw to save my life. So I thought I'd use my IT skills using Microsoft Word. <laughs> Are you proud, Omi? <laughs> Basically, you have to sketch out the uh, kind of area of where your consumer unit is, your electricity meter and of course where you want your charger to be fitted. My limited knowledge on this, it actually looks like it could be a simple installation, but there again, I don't know if the, what we have is suitable. Then also there's other things on the other side of the wall where the electricity meter is. So you've got things like radiators or the TV. So of course he's not gonna be drilling in that far, but there are a couple of things like, where's the pipe work for the radiators? They could be going at the wall. So there'll all be things they'll be testing for and hopefully the place where I would like the charger is suitable. But of course, we'll find out in a minute when the installers arrive. Now, the final two are obviously quite important. This is the distance to the meter. Uh, so your electricity meter there to the charger and of course to the consumer unit. Now, as you can see from my uh, very amateurish drawing on Microsoft Word, it's actually very, very close. However, because we have quite a small house, there's quite a bit of limited kind of access, consuming it literally being just above the front door and then it literally just going down the wall. So. Potentially, it might be quite easy, but then it could be quite difficult. But think about your house. It could be on the other side of the property to your drive, and it could warrant a slightly more complex installation. And also think about as well, the final point, how many walls is this cable going to go through? Is it one or is it two or is it three or four? Or is it gonna have to go underground to like a carport or an external building or something? But luckily this survey thing that you just do yourself and take photos and videos, and it's pretty easy to do. And then finally you get a congratulations you finished. And then we just wait for the install day, which is around about Ah, here they are now. Let's go check them out. So guys, plug-in are here at the moment and they are installing my charge point. And quite interesting actually, I didn't realise that uh, what they actually do, because of some regulations that have come out over the past couple of years, they actually need to be surge protected now, which of course I'm, I'm thankful for because uh, some of the electric cars I have driven are quite expensive just in case of a surge. Basically there's an, an additional thing that's installed right in next to the meter. So I actually thought it was going to be in the consumer unit in here but it has an additional thing on the exterior which uh, you can see just here. Anyway, they're probably in the middle of drilling uh, again in a second so uh, we'll wrap this up and continue some more footage. So it was Tom, wasn't it? Yes. Perfect, Tom. So, well, thank you very much. I know we're almost there now. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to pick your brains as well. So I thought that initially um, mm -hmm. a charge point was going to be fitted. It was going to go like back in there to the yeah. uh, to the top. But no, you said you have to fit it on there. Was it because it was like surge protected or something? Yes. So this device here is the surge protector and all new circuits. Yep in properties need to be surge protected. I guess that is quite wise because sometimes the EVs that I bring home, sadly, they're not mine, but they <laughs> are quite expensive. <laughs> so yes, no, I guess that is quite good just in case there is like a, a surge of some description. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess in a minute, we'll be able to obviously link this up with the app yeah. and I think it's like a QR code or something, did I Yes, read? so yeah. on the screen here in a minute, a QR code will present itself, which you just uh, okay. scan and that will link this charge point to your Knowing app. me, I did download the app already, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. So in terms of fitting Omi, are they one of the more easier ones to fit? Oh yes, definitely. Oh really? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah. I've heard um, from a few people, is it because then you don't have to worry about um, connecting to Wi-Fi and networks and reach and stuff like that? Yes, we don't, we don't have to worry about connecting to Wi-Fi. Also, we don't have to worry about connecting cables actually into the charge point itself. Because oh, because they're fixed. Because yeah. they're, they're sealed by OMI in the factory. Oh, I see. And then you do your work we, underneath that. We do our electrical connection separate to all the electronics that are in here. Yes. That makes it much easier for us. Ah, there we, you go. We don't That's have, easy. We don't have fiddly bits of wire no. to do inside. <laughs> yeah. inside. 
That was, so they've designed that away to make it, I guess, a little bit easier for you guys to install. Yes. I guess. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Well, we shouldn't be too much longer now. How, how long do you reckon? <laughs> uh, 15 minutes or so. Excellent. Okay. Want another cup of tea or are you all right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. All right then. Thank you. Yeah. So yes, do you have an Omi charger? I do now. Yeah. Let's scan the QR code. This one here. Go. Yes, okay, now you've got to select your vehicle. Oh, well, I don't have one at the moment. Okay, well, you can change this at any time. Yeah. So you just pick anything that Try you to pick want. Just pick other for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll give you to the whole list. So I followed the instructions, which involved picking your tariff with your electricity provider a couple of sets before, and of course, your car. After this, I had a quick demo of the app to see where everything was, including something that I wanted to do, which was to lock it from being used anyone other than us, just in case some random person wanted to try and get free electricity. Cool. Okay, that is the app. Wow. Pretty Just simple. need a car to test it now. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Amazing. No, thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank you. No I problem. don't know if you've got any more testing to do or is that no, that's, that it? Uh, that's it. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, well, let me turn that off and uh, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Thank you right. so much. Okay. So guys, that is my Omi installation all at home. And of course, most importantly, the 10 things that you guys need to know if you're considering an EV charge point for yourselves. Now, of course, I actually don't know how this works at the moment. As I said, I haven't got a car to test, uh, test it with, but hopefully I'll have one soon. And of course, I'll be able to check this out and of course, make a video or two about how you can get the best out of it because this is one of the smartest chargers out there. So, uh, That was really satisfying. <laughs> right guys, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and of course, I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching, take care.